Hey guys, so I'm gonna continue on here with our self-defense series and our series of uh, preparedness, general preparedness, and kind of situational awareness type videos using teaching instructionals. And today we're gonna continue on and we're gonna discuss a situation of where you could be in, a, in an environment like this, which is kind of an environment many of us would find ourselves in, uh, shooting some pool, in a nice, nice establishment, or you know, just an area relaxing out in a public place. What would happen in a kind of a self-defense situation here? And we're going to talk about situational awareness and environmental weapons. And also going to show a little bit of our products that we have here at Bone Tactical. The uh, some of the newest bone opener multi tools that we've got going and. This is the El Sicario shirt that I'm wearing. And then my friend here has on the Cholombia combat shirt. So gonna get my opinion and my friend Michael, I'll introduce him a little later in this video if you're looking for uh, another opinion on the, on the subject. And I'm just gonna go jump right into this and talk about a little bit about um, kind of situational awareness and uh, how it applies to potentially a self-defense situation so really one of the most important things and when, when we're out and about in a public area and really socializing and we, we want to obviously violence is never going to be our on our minds and it's not something that we want to gear anything towards or be prone towards but we always want to have a plan for you know contingency plan and a plan for anywhere that we are and worst possible scenario and our worst possible scenario plan would be always number one, you need to have an escape route. So you need to know, you know, if I need to get out of here, the layout of the building that I'm in. And as far as, you know, what's likely to get clogged, is there a lot of people? Is there, you know, am I in a stadium where I could get trampled if something happened? In this situation, I've got a lot of exit options. I've got exit here, exit there, exit there. I'm, I have that in my mind, but I'm relaxing, I'm playing pool. It doesn't have to be something noticeable. It doesn't have to be a burden or a bear. Um, and then also the next thing is really just environmental weapons and what I can use around me if I had to in a self-defense situation. You know, we've got pool sticks, pool cues. There's a lot, of, a lot of things here that we can use all the way down to gravity itself. If I had to, if I was, you know, attacked or had to defend myself or my loved ones, something of that nature. So if you don't have any of these tools that you really have no excuse not to have. Uh, bone opener, you know, this can be brought on on international flights, national flights, TSA, this can be brought literally anywhere. Anywhere you can go, you can bring this. And so there's really no excuse for not having one, but if you don't, I'm gonna get into uh, talking about, you know, what you can do if you don't have one. So if you don't have your EDC kank on you, if you don't have this, you know, there are some areas you can't bring this, so that's understandable. What can you use? Well, you can use anything that's around you, all right? So if, we're, if we happen to be shooting pool, there's a lot of misnomers about, you know, bar fights and, and, and pool and what's going to happen. So a lot of people will, will say, you know, hey, turn this around and swing it this way. Well, that'll give you one, one hit, you know, one good hit because what's going to happen is going to break. And then this is going to be really too flimsy to use you might be able to have one hit and then kind of one stab type thing with it. So what I would recommend doing is using it this way. It's gonna break always when you get that first strike if you have to use it. And then now you have a shorter end that you can use. It's gonna have a jagged end here you can use to stab with. And it's also gonna have a heavier end here that's less likely to break if you turn it around once it's broken off. You can continue to use it like this. You can cover up and use it here if it's weapon versus open hand or I can have it out here and try and keep them away if it's weapon versus weapon, okay, something like that. You'll hear people say, well, take your shirt off if I had an outer shirt like this and put a pool ball in it and you can swing it. Well, that takes a long time. Somebody told me on one of my other videos that it's in a Steven Seagal movie, which I haven't seen, but I have been in a situation where I've used similar things in real life and it doesn't work like you think it's going to. What happens a lot of times is this will rip out of whatever you put it in. If you put it in, you know, old soap in a sock or lock in a, you know, lock in a, in a sock or something like that um, that you've heard, possibly have heard of. It just doesn't actually work like you plan and it takes too long to set it up and then it doesn't last for very long. But this is a great thing because I can just have it, just having it in my hand allows me to 
use really strengthen my fist the same way that a bone breaker does. It strengthens the small bones of the hand, and then I can use it any kind of way that I swing it as well. It's an option for having a pool ball. So anything around you that's hard can be used as an environmental weapon in a self-defense situation. And um, so that's something you just want to be keep in mind what, after you look at those exit strategies and at, you have that situational awareness to just understand the materials that are around you, okay? So it, if I'm in this room that I'm in right now and you know, all the way down to gravity, and I always mention gravity, gravity as a situational awareness thing and as an environmental weapon. And people don't understand, well, how is gravity a weapon? Well, if I were to just fall right here from this height, completely went, my body went limp and I fell and my head hit the ground, there'd be somewhere around a 30 to 70% chance that I would die from that impact. Just from six feet to the ground. The, the impact that if you get knocked down and that head, head bouncing off the ground, that's off a of hard, this ground is very hard where I'm at right now. It's tile. So that's gravity right there. And so that's something else to think about. If I have this, if I have this, am I gonna swing up against gravity or am I gonna swing down with gravity in any kind of a situation? I'm gonna use gravity to my advantage. And the third thing that I have to really mention is training, guys. And you've gotta watch these videos, you've gotta take notes, and you've gotta put this stuff into implementation. You've gotta practice because I can tell you now that you have to understand when you get into grappling or hold, small joint manipulation, you've got to understand and you've got to know how to feel and how the body, human body moves. My, all my joints move this direction. They don't move this direction. They lock right there. So I, that's an elbow lock, a wrist lock, okay? And I can manipulate the way somebody's body's moving, use gravity, and then manipulate that off of this hard surface here, off of this hard surface here. So I'm using gravity to my advantage, but if I don't understand the martial arts, if I haven't done it and put it into practice and understand how the human body moves, I don't have those abilities. If I don't understand that I need to cover here, okay, that I need to use my elbows to protect here, use my hands to protect here, the way that I can turn my body skinnier, that way I'm less of a target, use my knees to protect anything coming in here just by simply shifting my movement and my weight to my back foot makes this front foot kind of just fluid, okay? It turns it from, if I'm just standing here solid with all this facing, then what that does is I just make myself more of a target and then standing solid and being tense makes any kind of an impact much more, much more likely to do damage to me. So if I'm loose, what that does is I can absorb those impacts or deflect those impacts. And that's what I want to do. And that's the stuff that you can only learn through training, guys. Okay, so that's something really that's important to learn. Now I'm going to introduce my friend Michael here. Um, and Michael has a, a lot of his own experience. And I'm going to go ahead and let him tell you what his experience or what his uh, train of thought on any of this is. He's got very different experiences, but he's got a lot of also experience with physical altercations like I have. Michael, is there anything you want to share as far as situational awareness or uh, you've heard what I've been saying, so anything you want to share on these topics? A lot of things he said is, is like situational awareness. He did say, you got to look at corners. You have to look at doors, ways in, ways out. You can use things like this. Anytime you're, you're turning a corner, especially ladies, teach your wife, kids, loved ones, when they're walking around an alley, when they're walking around a building, leaving somewhere, you don't want to like turn this corner really fast. Just like in a car, you turn it, you don't know what's coming. Swing out wide, get around, look, see what you're going to before you come around that corner. So you can see it before it gets there. If they're waiting on you around the corner and you make this turn, it's too late to get away now. They got you. If you swing out and you see them, now you've got somewhere to go. you got, you got an exit route. So the biggest thing is it doesn't matter if it's the people, the place you're in, the environment. You've always got to worry about that. Anybody that's going to be trying to get at a female, they're going to hide and try to catch her. You know, they're not going to be just wide open running at her where she can go. So just teach all your loved ones, friends, you know, husbands, just talk to them. It's, it's not hard. It's not something you have to be super skilled to do. You do need to be aware of it. You need to think about it. And this is just a common practice. Anytime you walk around, that'll, you'll notice running into people at Walmart when you turn a corner and you bump into somebody because you weren't paying attention. If that was somebody trying to get you, they've already got you. Uh, a few other things, like he said gravity. You know anybody that's coming at you, or their weight's coming to you. 
So if you know they're stronger than you and you know you can't just stop them, use their weight. As they're coming to you, use it, okay? Just like this surface here. Just like this surface right here. If someone's coming at you and you have something hard, whether it be the wall, like you said, the floor, this is a perfect idea. Staircase like we have over here. Any of this, someone coming at me, say I'm coming down this staircase and they're running. Well, if I stand here, even if I can catch them, I'm probably gonna fall. But if I can step to the side, any weight that they have, just deflect them. I probably don't even have to push them. If I can deflect them, they're gonna hit this as they fall. Use it. As they're falling, sharp corners, hard objects. And that, not only that, if it, if it doesn't work, they fail, now you can get away. You have an, you have an exit route. Uh, anything like this, just like I say, biggest thing, situational awareness. But like you said, you gotta train it. You gotta at least think about it everywhere you go. It doesn't mean you have to go sign up, take martial arts classes every day. But if you're thinking about it constantly when something's going on, you're more apt to be able to do it when you need to. All right, guys, well, this is Michael. He works with Bone Tactical as a, uh, he originally was a guide for Bone Outdoors and he started way before we made any money. Um, and was taking out uh, disabled vets or children and you've seen some of our Instagram videos of us doing some bow fishing with some disabled veterans and he still takes out kids and really just does a lot and, and he's a great uh, hunter, avid outdoorsman and he's had a lot of experience like I said. Um, if you guys want to see some more of him in future videos we're going to get into a, a Bone Outdoors channel. We're looking to start a Bone Outdoors channel and really just do a dedicated hunting and fishing and outdoors channel that he's going to take off. Um, we're looking to do that in the next six months to a year, uh, really just hitting it hard and getting on it. Hopefully this hunting season we'll be able to put some stuff together for you guys. If there's any, uh, uh, please qu uh, comments and questions below. I'll relay them to him if you do are interested in something like that let me know and we'll we'll really put more into it but we're looking at it right now and uh, like I said he's a uh, he's a uh, been working with me for a long time now it's about six years we've been working together uh, done a lot of hunting together took take we've taken a lot of people out who otherwise wouldn't have had the opportunity to get out in the woods and and feel the really healing power of nature and that's kind of one of his biggest goals and you know we're gonna get back into it you guys are familiar with my story and you, you're aware of why that had to take a back burner for a little while, but now that we can put that uh, back on the front burner, we're kind of looking to put that in the front burner. And um, I'm going to go ahead and hit you with the bone out, but I'll give I'll give Michael a chance here to, to kind of finish off and tell you guys anything else he wants to tell you. Like I said, questions for him, questions below in the comment section. Go ahead and like this and let me know if you want to see more of Michael in the future in the channel. Yeah, like you said, uh, biggest thing is getting people outdoors now. Uh, we just kind of started out with disabled veterans and we've done some uh, and, and had a good outcome with that. We, uh, we had a better outcome with, with children that uh, maybe their family doesn't hunt. Maybe they don't have a place to hunt. As we know now, the generation doesn't do this anymore. They don't shoot guns. They don't, and it's not so much that they don't want to. Maybe they live in a place where they can't. Uh, maybe their parents just didn't do that. But uh, I believe that getting outdoors, hunting, fishing, doing those kind of things, one, keep you out of trouble, but also teach you life lessons. It'll teach you, you know, if, if things get bad, how to survive on your own. Uh, biggest thing is nowadays can't even change, kids can't even change a flag. So uh, you take a kid that will life show skills. them that guns can be good, that they're not bad. I know they see video games, TVs, do it for the wrong purpose, but they've never seen them used for the right purpose. Uh, so all they know is guns and bad. So uh, we just want to teach kids the right way, keep them out of trouble, do things with them that, like I say, maybe it's not because their family don't want to take them hunting, they just don't have a place or the means to, or they don't know how. So that's our biggest goal is just to, to get, you know, anybody disabled can't, anybody, kids and, and whatnot. If, you know, if you're on here and your kid would like to, uh, just hit us up. We'll try to arrange it any way we can. Oh, yeah. Uh, hunting season's a few months away. Uh, we, we mostly deer, turkey, you know, squirrel, rabbit hunt. Biggest thing, the easiest thing to get kids out there to do that they can see wildlife and, and enjoy it without getting bored. North, we're in North Alabama and South Tennessee right now is where we're doing most of our hunting and, and fishing and stuff like that. So uh, if you, like if Michael said, if you, you know, reach, reach out here and let us know if you want to uh, see more of this or if you'd like to get linked up with us. So we're looking to really get in about the end of this year, beginning of next year, we should be be getting into doing a lot of uh, videos and, and hopefully we'll have a Bone Outdoor channel, uh, standalone channel on YouTube, Bone Outdoor.